Hey, what's good, everybody? Thank you for checking me out. My name is Eko Simpson. If this is your first time of checking out my YouTube videos, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know what? Um, dealing with a lot of diasporas has given me, has opened my eyes to a lot of things. Honestly, at the end of the day, it's all about the culture. Yes, everything that we do now is all about the culture. A culture is a way of life of a particular group of people in a particular location. Honestly, I think I have to start a series. And this series is going to be a conversational series that has to do with living in Ghana or moving from wherever you are from the diaspora to live in the motherland, especially Ghana and maybe Cape Coast to be precise. My interactions with a lot of diasporas has really opened my eye to a lot of things. Honestly, I am learning a lot. You know, the Ghana culture is way different from that of the United States, that of the UK. I remember uh, I went with uh, a friend to the Asebo land. He's from the UK. And then he was like, Echo, you know the way we do our things is like it's systematic. But when we go here, things are a little bit slow and that, you know, I can't deal with it and all. I'm like, yes, I understand you because you are now in a different location with a different culture altogether. We may all have our roots from Africa, but hey, depending on where we grew up and where we are right now, the culture is way different. So this series basically is going to be about how we do things in Ghana. Yes, and how society sees certain things done in Ghana. And who a Ghanaian man is, or who an African man is, or who an African woman is, or who an African child is. So I will entreat you that when you get to watch this video, put up a comment and let's share ideas. Because a lot of things that we do here, and then when you come, it's way different. I know it gets most of you frustrated. Yes, I mean, I have experienced it a uh, few weeks ago few days ago i have seen the frustration in some of you know the african brothers and sisters from the diaspora coming to the motherland because the way they do things is way different from how we do things so today this series is basically going to look at who a ghanaian man is how do the society see a ghanaian man a typical Ghanaian, African Ghanaian man, a traditional African. You know, I'm using all these words for you to understand that when I mean a typical Ghanaian man, someone who was born in Ghana to both Ghanaian parents and grown up in Ghana who has never lived anywhere apart from being in Ghana. So today, the focus is going to be on the African typical Ghanaian man. So let's go to it. Now, when you're born a man, in Ghana there's a whole lot of things that the society expect to see from you yes um, I have a little problem with the society you know how society perceive a man now let me be very honest with you and tell you this if you're born an African man then you have a lot on your head it may be in other countries like the US the UK the Brazil but now we're talking about the African Ghanaian man. If you're born a male in Ghana, mind you, there is a heavy load on your head. Now, growing up, society expects you to live a certain life that depicts a man, an African man, going to school, um, finishing your junior high school, and then if there is enough help, you may want to go to the senior high school or you may drop and go and learn a trade. You either go and learn carpentry or learn masonry or learn um, being an electrician or something else besides being in the classroom. So now, if this thing happens to you after that, at the age of 18, you are now an adult. So being an adult means that you can do certain things like other adults do, like um, having a girlfriend, uh, maybe getting your own apartment, maybe getting a house to stay, and then maybe finding a work. Yes, I mean, at age of 18, your parents may look at you as an adult because in our constitution, 18 is an adult. 18 years is an adult. So uh, when you're able to move away from the house, then you need to go look for work and do. If you happen to find a work and do, 
society expects you to get married now this is the interesting part i mean with school yes then you have to find a job so if you get a job and you start making money this is the real hustle now if you're an african Ghanaian man society expects you to take care of your mom your dad your siblings and some of your extended family members there's a typical Ghanaian addict that i want to share with you he says that it means literally in English, it means that if someone takes care of you from infancy to your older age, you also have the responsibility to take care of that person when that person grows up. So it's like vice versa. I took care of you when you were younger. Now, if I am old, you also have to take care of me. So that mentality is being put into the minds of a Ghanaian man. So when you go out there, society expects, okay, hey, you are working, you are making money. Come back and take care of the other family members. It is sometimes your duty, your responsibility, and your rights. Because if you don't do this, the Ghanaian man, if you don't do this, the society sees you as inconsiderate person, as somebody who doesn't appreciate anything. So then society begins to frown on your activities or even your presence and you've gotten it and you're not taking care of your parents that is the system here in Ghana now let's go to the interesting part you have to get married the society sees a responsible Ghanaian man as someone who's gotten married you may have all the cars in this world have all the houses have all the private jets and everything but if you're not married in the Ghanaian society you are not really recognized because they think that a responsible person is someone who is married and is taking care of the child and then the wife. The most interesting and what lately some of my friends have been you know, talking about is the process of getting married as a Ghanaian man. This is you as a man, this is the woman. Society says that you need to go to I think this is something that I would also have to talk about when it comes to getting married But then let me just chip in that before you go get married You have to go get a list from the wife's parents a tall list that says buy this do this do this do that And then you get all of them you send it to the woman's house with your parents and then the marriage begins from there But I'll not go into details now Another thing that is expected of you as a Ghanaian, typical Ghanaian man is that when you get married within six months or one year, you are expected to have a child. And when you don't have a child, people start asking questions. I have had an example where a friend of mine, you know, made a statement about a lady that was passing by like, hey, Echo, this lady is married like two years ago. Why is she not giving me? I'm like, is that your problem? Is that your issue? But yes, it's the societal expectations. The society expects you to have child or have children right after you've gotten married. And that is not what it's supposed to be. But like I said, this is talking about a typical Ghanaian man who was born and bred in Ghana and has never traveled. This is what the society expects from such a person. That when you get married, you need to have children. If you don't have children within a year or two they start pointing fingers and making certain accusations now let me ask you in the united states in the uk in the canada in the caribbean in china in japan in kenya what does the society expect from you as a man are you forced to get married even at a certain point if you're a man and you're above 25 and you're working the society start making some comments and uh, you are growing you are you are getting old you are 25 you need to get married and do this and do that so these are some of the things that is expected of a Ghanaian man by the society now the last part which is giving a lot of stress yes to African men is the fact that when you start working society expects you to build a house yes sometimes they may even say build a house for your family for your mother that is what the society expects you to do one build for your father or for your mother especially and secondly you need to build for yourself and that is giving a lot of um depression and stress 
to a lot of guys because the working system in Ghana doesn't make one really rich. No, it doesn't make one really rich. The working system in Ghana doesn't make one rich. You're a teacher, a normal teacher in the classroom. You don't take that much. You're a normal policeman. You're a normal um, fireman. You're a normal nurse. You don't make that amount for you to say, hey, I'm going to buy a plot of land and build. But the society expects that as a man, you need to build. And like I said, this is giving a lot of stress to some of we, the young guys here in Africa, in Ghana to be specific. If you only go about renting houses, then they will say, so you're going to get married and bring your children to a house that you've rented that doesn't belong to you. And then after a year or two, if there's any inconveniences in there, then you have to move and keep renting and keep renting. But a responsible person in the African Ghanaian system is someone who has built his own house. So this gives a lot of us, the young guys, a lot of depression, a lot of pressure because you have two to three kids. You have a wife, which I will talk about later. You know, like I said, this is a conversation. This is my experience as a Ghanaian male born in Africa. I said in Africa because I was born to Ghanaian parents in Nigeria and when I was one year old I was brought to Ghana. So I was born in Nigeria but I'm a Ghanaian because both of my parents are Ghanaians. Yes, so living in Ghana since I was one year old till now, these are the experiences that I have witnessed as a Ghanaian man. So basically this video is to share with you what African men go through under the so-called society, what society expects you to do. And if you derail a little bit from the so-called norm, then you are not part of the society. Then you may not be that person that they will call when there's a family meeting. It really happens. If you don't have money, if you're not working, when the society calls a meeting, they don't call you. What are you coming to say? Yes, the society has its positives, but like I said, most of these things that the society expects from us are a depression, a form of a depression to a lot of younger brothers who are living in Ghana. So if you're watching this video, kindly put up a comment and share. Let us share together because I would love to learn. My interactions with a lot of African brothers and sisters here in Ghana has opened my eye to a lot of things. And this is the reason why I have come your way to share with you what to expect. How do you see an African brother when you come to Ghana. Thank you very much for checking me out. So until I come your way again, kindly put up a comment. Let me know how things are done in your country. Are you allowed to stay in your mother's or your father's apartment after 18 years? Or when you start working? Because I learned out there in the States or wherever, um, when you start working, your parents expect you to move. And if you're not going to move, then your parents expect that you pay something, maybe utility bill or maybe food. But here in Ghana, you can be as old as 40, 45, and you're still staying in your parents' house. They don't really care. They care, but they, are, they won't push you out. So far as you do what they expect you to do, they won't push you out. But at a certain point, like I said, society begins to speak. Look at this old man staying in his mother's house. That is where the depression comes in. You're not working, you're not making enough money as a usual government worker unless you go for loan to maybe build. And how much are you even going to get as a loan to build? These are the things that happens to the typical African man that I think our brothers and sisters out there should learn about our culture same way we also learn about yours. So put up a comment, let me know how things are done in your country, and then we will take it from there in relation to the culture. Peace.